Hello and welcome to Game Patrol. I'm your host, Landon Pumley, and this is the seventh episode. That's right. You know what they say about lucky number seven. Yeah, I, I don't really know where I was going with that, but hey guys, what is up? I was a little distracted because I realized that I hadn't taken my phone out and placed it on the table as I usually did. And I also didn't turn my notifications off, so I wanted to make sure I had that silenced. And so then, you know, my brain just continues on uh, without actually knowing what it's going to say. So I just sort of spurred out words. And so that is why I'm an English major. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, just a, a quick thing. So this podcast episode is not going to be quite as long as I hyped it up to be on the last episode. And that is because, to be perfectly honest with you guys, this past week has been pretty horrible um i've had a lot of personal stuff going on and so it's just between that and being incredibly busy i just was unable to do a whole lot so i was not able to play any more temtem i only got to play zombie army 4 for like an hour and so because of that i don't have a whole lot to talk about this week but something i am very excited to talk about is to give a full in-depth review of geforce now and I have a lot to say about it. And, you know, it's going to be some really cool discussion. It's also in the news this week again. So very excited to talk about that. So hope you guys are excited. Um, and we'll stick around for the whole show because we got a bunch to talk about. And first off, there's a whole bunch of games coming this week. And so, um, again, like I said, these are just the more notable ones. But there are quite a few releasing within the next week. One of them is out today for you guys tomorrow for me. And that is Damon X Machina on PC. So this is the Nintendo Switch exclusive that is now getting ported over to PC. Not the first game to do this. We had um, Octopath Traveler come to PC later. I, I think the, these are the only two. Um, I could be wrong, but I, it, it seems like this is the second big Switch game to come over. I don't believe there's been any, any more. But it's interesting to see that we're seeing this. Oh, wait, no. Um, Travis Strikes Back. No More Heroes. It also came to PC and PS4. Um, I don't think Xbox though, but maybe it did. I don't remember. But you know, we're seeing more Switch games get ported over, which is interesting. You know, I, I like you know seeing these franchises and properties go over to other places because why not? You know, it's just more people that are allowed to play your game. You know, so yeah, it's great. But in case you didn't know, um, little description of Damon X Machina: Pilot your fully customizable arsenal mech and join your fellow mercenaries in defending humanity from the corrupted machines and gigantic robots in this post-apocalyptic action game. So essentially, it's like the Transformers games, um, probably of the same quality because this game got pretty mixed reviews. But you know, it exists. It's there. It's present. You can get it right now on Steam if you want to. I think it's on Steam. Yeah, it's on Steam. I know it's on Steam. You know, there's all these, like, Epic Games exclusives now, but including one that I'm going to get to in a little bit here. But next game up on the list is Snack World The Dungeon Crawl Gold. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's coming out for Nintendo Switch exclusively tomorrow, Valentine's Day. So, you know, if you've got a partner, if you've got somebody that you want to snuggle up with, then play some Snack World. Uh, have fun with it. So, um, after your village is invaded, become a heroic adventurer and seek revenge against the villainous Sultan Vinegar. Ha, huh, that's funny. I just got that. Huh. In this RPG, crawl through randomly generated dungeons in your search for rare treasure and team up with up to three other players in local or online multiplayer to take down tenacious tyrants so there you go you guys can play some snack world together it'd be super fun this is um the western uh, sort of expansion slash version of this game it came out in japan um i think 2018 it originally came out on the 3ds then there was an enhanced port for the switch and now it's coming to america and all of that fun stuff so yeah if that suits your fancy you know valentine's day fun times also out on Valentine's Day, really big one, Dreams for PS4. This is a game that's been in development since like the beginning of the PlayStation 4. It's from the developers of Little Big Planet and Tearaway. It's an extraordinary, ever-expanding game universe from the award-winning Media Molecule, where you can discover community-made games from around the world and learn to make your own. So this, this game is insane. This game is like if Minecraft was injected with 17 steroids. So you can 
play other people's levels or games you can make your own you can use templates so you can use like certain parts of people's games to incorporate into your own game there's all sorts of different stuff it makes it super easy um and you get rewarded for doing all types of stuff whether you make some sort of environment or you make some sort of um you know player or some sort of thing like anything you do you're getting rewarded for and you you know there's the community on dreams is amazing i'm super excited for this game i really want to check it out some uh some initial impressions have been really really good uh as of my it'll probably be a lot different by the time this podcast is up but right before i started the podcast there were four scores on metacritic averaging at a 94 so again those are only four scores so it could drastically change but the initial impressions are really really positive and this could be a high for the year so yeah it's been an early access for I think like a year now, uh, something or somewhere around there. Um, but now it's finally coming out in full release. And it also comes with a full game. So if you aren't that creative and you aren't convinced that there's going to be a whole lot of cool games to play yet from people that, you know, are making the games, they have a full campaign that they put into Dreams if you, you know, want something to really like sink your teeth into right away. So it's a lot of cool stuff. I'm very excited for it. Again, it comes out on Valentine's Day. So you can make some dreams with your partner, all that sort of fun stuff. Or, you know, if you're one of the lonely ones, um, like currently myself, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll play dreams together, you know, you and me. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's play some dreams. I, I, I honestly probably won't have it right now because I'm currently struggling to come up with money for E3. And also, I just got hit with a tuition bill. So, not a whole lot of money. I'm also working on a project for somebody that I care about a lot. So that requires some moolah as well. So dreams probably won't be a pickup, but I mean, at least not immediately. I, I will probably get back to it, but not at launch, unfortunately. Sad face. Cheers. But next up, we've got Darksiders Genesis for PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch on Valentine's Day as well. So yeah, this is, uh, it came out on PC and Stadia in December and is now finally coming to consoles. So Darksiders Genesis is an action adventure that tears its way through hordes of demons, angels, and everything in between on its way to hell and back with guns blazing and swords swinging. Genesis gives players their first look at the world of Darksiders before the events of the original game, as well as introduces the Horseman's Strife. So this is a Diablo clone. Um, it's, you know, there's not really much to say about that. It's a spinoff of the Darksiders series. I've played the first one, haven't dabbled on the second, although I do own it. Um, I haven't played the third. I don't think I own it. I think I missed the chance when it was on PS Plus. Um, but so I, I played some Darksiders Genesis. I feel like I said this all the way back on like the first podcast or something like that. I don't remember. I feel like I said it before, but I, I played Darksiders Genesis at E3 and it was it was buggy and i just didn't have that great of a time and you know i'd never been much of a diablo player although i started playing diablo 3 just a couple months ago i haven't gotten back into it because i've been busy but um it was really cool i actually really like it i really dig it a lot and in comparison just thinking back to my time at e3 with dark Siders genesis i just it wasn't that however i'm willing to give it another shot and i'm actually going to pick this up um I just because of you know it's a really big deal you know Darksiders game it's cool but uh I realize now that the camera for my YouTube viewers was on a wire this whole time so there you go uh helps you see a little better my YouTube folks um but anyway so yeah I'm gonna pick this up on Stadia probably though just because you know it's been a while since I bought a Stadia game and also I, I didn't hear about any bugs or anything like that but you know it'll be fixed by now even though it's been out since december and i know the whole thing is that the console ports are coming out i think i'm gonna pick it up on stadia and yeah i'm gonna put some deep time into it so expect a full like dark siders genesis discussion for next week and that much i can guarantee you like i will put as much time into dark siders genesis as i possibly can without ruining my life and so um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna dig deep into this game because well one um it got really good reviews when it came out for PC. I think it had like a 77 on Metacritic, but like IGN gave it an 8.5, I believe, or something like that. Now they just do the 8. They they only use 10-point scale now, but back last year they didn't. And so, um, yeah, it reviewed really well. And so I think it'll be cool. And, you know, like that was, like I said, it, the main thing was that it was just kind of buggy and I wasn't, 
like I said, I'm not like the biggest player of those types of games, but I'm willing to give it another shot, especially because of the reviews. And so expect a full discussion about it next week. So, yeah. Uh, then on the 17th, which is Tuesday? No, it's Monday. Uh, is Corruption 2029. So this is a PC exclusive, uh, one that, like I said, I think it's an Epic Games exclusive. Don't actually quote me on that because now that I realize it when I was looking it up, that's just the first thing that popped up, so it could be on Steam. But um, set in a dystopian America in the not-so-distant future, Corruption 2029 is a new tactical strategy game from the Bearded Ladies. <laughs> uh, creators of Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. Using your supreme tactical abilities, command a squad of heavily automated units deep into enemy territory to discover the cause of the corruption. Um, so, yeah. Um, Mutant Year Zero, uh, that was like a fall 2018 game, wasn't it? Or something like that. Not super long ago. So I was I was intrigued to hear that they've already got this new game out now. But um, Mutant Year Zero was kind of like a little bit of a cult hit. It, I wouldn't say it was massively successful, but like there was a there was a fan base there. And so if you were a fan of Mutant Year, Mutant Year Zero, that's hard to say. Um, you know, you could check this one out. I don't know a whole lot about it. It's kind of slid under my radar. But, you know, if you're a tactical strategy guy and, you know, you like the bearded ladies, then this this could be the game for you. And, you know, Corruption, what a great title. Um, we all love that in America, don't we? Anyway, uh, another thing we've got coming out on Tuesday is Bayonetta and Vanquish 10th Anniversary Bundle. This one got a lot of people excited. So we got Bayonetta on the Switch. Uh, 2018? I think that was... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was like February 2018 or something like that. But um, we're now getting it and Vanquish for PS4 and Xbox One. So experience the genesis of the Bayonetta series with the original action adventure. Take advantage of Bayonetta's arsenal of skills to hack, slash, and open fire upon hordes of celestial foes. Also, play as space soldier Sam Gideon in the hit sci-fi shooter Vanquish. Equipped with Blade, the experimental weapon system that can scan and copy existing weapons, he must infiltrate conquered space colony Providence and defeat legions of future tech enemies. So, I have played Bayonetta. Fantastic game. I have not played Vanquish, actually, but I've heard it is a phenomenal game. It's another one of those that didn't review you know, extremely well, but the fan base loved it and went crazy for it. So it's just this, it's, it is a popular cult hit. Unlike Mutant Year Zero, like this game, people got excited when it came to PC. And so now that it's coming to consoles, like new, these current gen consoles, yeah, people are excited. So I might, I might have to pick this one up. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But you know, Vanquish, it does look pretty good. It looks like a game I would enjoy, but I just never, never played it never taken the time to never really had the opportunity to so you know it's it's got me intrigued but yeah then finally on tuesday we have dcl the game for ps4 xbox one and pc this one's a doozy so um dcl the game is the official video game of the drone champions league the world's leading series for drone racing teams fly the original tracks from dcl and experience drone racing like a professional pilot join the flying revolution so the fact that there's a drone champions league racing team is news to me i mean that's phenomenal i i didn't realize that was a thing but that's great you know Okay, yeah, sure. And now they're making a video game about it. So like maybe it's a big deal I kind of want to look it up and like check out like what this stuff is But yeah, you got a drone racing game So if you have been itching for one of those it is finally here on Tuesday. So, you know drone to your heart's content Yeah Although the lesser known sports games usually don't do well. So I would not be surprised if this has some issues I mean, let's look at AO tennis um, motocross, um, just, you know, any, anything that's not football, soccer, or basketball and like made by this huge brand, because when you think of like, like, um, NBA live, I mean, honestly, that is made by a huge brand, but it's not 2k. And so, you know, you know, you kind of have to have millions and millions of dollars and brand recognition and no competition to make a successful sports game. So They've got the no competition part, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's all the games coming out. Yeah, there's it's quite a lot, but you know, fun times. You know, it's a great time for gamers. And so, yeah, cool stuff. But now getting into the gaming news. So this just came out re very recently. Um, E3 2020 uh, announced the companies that are attending. So we got an official list. 
So let's see here. We've got confirmed companies attending the show. We've got Xbox, obviously, uh, Nintendo, which previously there was like a leak of the companies, and Nintendo was not on the list. So people freaked out and was like, Nintendo's not coming, but they are. Calm down. They literally confirmed it months ago. Um, what the? Okay, that, that was not working. Uh, but then we've got Capcom. It's confirmed. Ubisoft. So I, I was thinking about it, and it's like, we're getting an Assassin's Creed this year. That, that much is pretty much confirmed, unless it, for some reason it gets delayed or something. But that means I could possibly play Assassin's Creed at E3 this year, and that has me so excited. <laughs> like, oh, I, I am one of the biggest Assassin's Creed fans out there. So the, the thought of being able to play Assassin's Creed Vikings or Ragnarok is what it sounds like it's being called right now. I, ah, that makes me super excited because I love Odyssey. I think Odyssey is the best Assassin's Creed game. Um, but oof, it's got me excited. Um, Bethesda, of course. I mean, they always they have their conferences now. I'm hoping we get some stuff on Starfield. It's it's been in development for a few a few years now. I think this is the year. I think we're gonna finally get something. Um, maybe next spring. I don't know. It could be a launch. If Starfield is a launch game. <gasps> That would be intense. And it's not out of the ballpark. I mean, they released Fallout 4 after announcing it at E3 in November. So seeing Starfield as a launch game, that's entirely in the ballpark. Like, we could totally have that happen, and that would kill 2020. This brand new IP from this really respected open-world RPG developer that's been going through a really tough time lately, if we're being honest here. Um, you know, uh, new console, new IP, new direction. That'd be so many cool stuff. However, it could be that d development might be pushed back a little bit just because, you know, Bethesda has not been receiving good press lately, and maybe they just want to take the time to make sure they do this one right. So it could, you know, it could be either way. But I think it's totally logical to think that we might see Starfield this year. And it'd be really cool. I We still have no idea exactly what the game's going to be, but, like, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I mean... Whether or not you like Fallout 4, I mean, it's a good it's a good game, okay? You know, there are things that people will debate over, but it's a good game, okay? So just shut up. Fallout's great. Fallout 76 was not that bad either. I'm going to say that now, and I'm going to move on. Okay, Sega is coming, so new Sonic game, question mark? I think there's been some rumors about one, especially because this is, this is Sonic's 20th, isn't it? That's why we're getting the movie. Um, I think I might go out with a friend on Valentine's Day and watch it, and that's that's gonna be my date. Go watch Sonic um, instead of playing all those video games I just told you you should play, but but um, also playing Dark Siders. But Square Enix is also coming, so let's see Avengers. That's gonna be their big push uh, since it got delayed into September. You know, it's kind of what they got. That's their big thing. I mean, no one's surprised here, but yeah, that's gonna be cool. Bandai Namco. Um, I believe Elden Ring is like from software is partnering up with Bandai again. I because I yeah I think so. I I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're they're teaming up with Bandai again. So that could be it. I could be wrong, but Elden Ring, which some people are saying is coming this year, so maybe we'll see stuff there. WB Games, my God, if we don't see that freaking Batman game from Montreal, I will be so upset because they've been teasing it for so freaking long. It's been like, what, two years now of marketing it? Just marketing it. Don't even, like, get me started on all the rumors before that, but when they started teasing, like, Court of Owls stuff, my God, just announce the game at E3. I mean, I won it before, but, like, if it is not announced by E3, I'll lose it. It's just ridiculous to have this. Like, people are legitimately upset. Like, you have people in the games industry that are like, this is ridiculous. This is a stupid marketing strategy. Just announce your stupid game already. Like, gosh. Also, Rocksteady, please, please give us a new game. I miss you so much. Arkham Knight is a really underrated game. I could have done with a little less Batmobile stuff, but it's really good. Arkham City, one of my favorite games of all time. Arkham Asylum's really good too. Arkham Origins, again, not by Rocksteady, but it was good. Uh, just give me more, please, please, please. please. Justice League game, because they already said it's not a Superman game. So Justice League game, or heck, another Batman, you know? <laughs> is it gonna happen? Probably not, but like, that'd be great too. Maybe that's why they're being so hush-hush, is because WB, like Montreal is like, hey, we're gonna make a Batman game, and then they're like, oh, well, we're we're doing that too, and they're like, oh, well, hold off on it, you know, just you know, twiddle your thumbs for a little bit, make make the make your VR game, and they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, I don't know, but 
Uh, yeah, so moving on. Oh, also, Cyberpunk, you know? I swear, if it's not playable at E3 this year, I will lose it, because that's why I was so excited last year, and then it wasn't playable, so it better be this time, and it is where I'm going. I will sprint towards that booth. Like, oh, oh my god. Oh, I, I have chills just thinking about it. It'll be amazing. Take two interactive. Skywalker saga? I'm assuming since we haven't gotten a release date, it'll be after um, E3. No? Yeah. Um, I believe there's more than that, but this is all that this is giving me. But those are the big ones, you know? So I'm really nervous because they say that they're launching a... Um, they're launching the site tomorrow or today for you guys, so it should be up by the time I get this podcast uploaded. Well, maybe not. We'll see how early I get up. But um, I'm really worried that the tickets will go on sale then. I don't. I honestly, the more the closer we get to it, the more I don't think so because they haven't marketed it as such. They haven't actually said anything at all. It just it's just like when you go to E3's website, it says launching Thursday, and so. You know, hopefully, because I don't have the money right now, and I really want to pay that early bird fee, but also I need to save up 250 anyway, because if it's anything like last year and the website crashes, I'm going to have to end up paying that and then get refunded $100 later. So either way, I don't have the money right now, so I would really appreciate it if it's not Thursday, because I would like to get the early bird fee, but I don't have that kind of cash on me right now. I have $70. And I also have bills to pay that will take that. So I gotta get paid on Friday, on Valentine's Day. Just wish I had somebody I could spend it on. But anyway. Um, next up, The Division 2 is on sale for $3 until March 2nd. I know this is technically kind of like small news, but this is a heckin' good deal. The Division 2 was one of the best reviewed games of last year, but it did not sell well because, okay, my thing is here. Here's my big thing. Well, A, The Division did not do well, and so I don't think people really trusted Ubisoft. But B, it came out the week after uh, Devil May Cry 5 and the week before Sekiro. So that was just poor uh, planning for them. So, yeah, um, it didn't do well, and so it deserves this. So pay $3. There's also an expansion coming out in March. I think it is March 3rd is when the expansion comes out. Um, I bought it. Because I haven't played it, and so I'm going to play it on GeForce now, which I'm very excited about. And so I also have my friend buy it. And so um, we're playing through Dying Light right now. We're replaying it because we love that game. But once we're done, we're going to play The Division 2. And I'm very excited because I've heard very good things about it. And as someone, I was insanely excited for The Division. Like, at the time, it was probably my most anticipated game right before it came out. Because the whole, like, when they marketed it with the Dark Zone and everything, which turned out to be a complete lie... Um, I was so excited for that concept because it was like DayZ, but, you know, like military shooter type thing. I mean, DayZ is kind of like that. But, you know, I never jumped into DayZ, and by the time I was able to, it was dead. So I was super excited to jump into the division, like super excited. I pre-ordered it, and then it was – it was not – bad like it wasn't really a bad game it just was such a disappointment compared to what they like said it was going to be whereas the division 2 they marketed it as it was and it did what it said it did you know and it was it's, it was a really good game so i'm excited to play it um also like my my friend and i we blasted through destiny we actually i haven't finished shadow keep um it wasn't really enticing me that much we'll probably get to it eventually but um we've played through a lot of destiny 2 and so i'm excited to have a similar kind of experience with the division 2 so hey they're both d2 wow anyway so yeah on sale three dollars on all platforms ps4 uh, uh xbox one pc i almost said ps4 playstation 4 but um yeah get it it's three dollars dude i just talked about how broke i was but i bought it because $3, that's a steal for a game that's not even a year old. Hell yeah. Get that. Get it. Just get it. It's $3, and you can play with friends, so you can make friends if you don't have any. Jeez. Anyway, next up, a little bit of sad news, but Activision Blizzard uh, is removing all of their games from GeForce Now. L literally got this news a week after the service launched. 
So we're not exactly sure what's going on. NVIDIA made a statement saying that they are attempting to get them back. But originally, I thought that this was kind of like a launcher thing. Like they just weren't going to support Battle.net anymore. But now, because I have Black Ops 3 on Steam, it's not a supported game anymore. So it is it is all Activision Blizzard games. So whether you have it on Battle.net or Steam before, you know, they brought the Activision games over, um, all that, you know, they're all gone. That's really sad because one of the main things that my friend and I were so excited about was being able to play Overwatch because uh, my laptop can run it, but he doesn't have any system that can run Overwatch anymore. And so it's just been years since we've played together. So we were really excited about that. And then they took it away. <laughs> so I'm hoping that they do resolve this. It does beg the question. I would really love to know sort of the – what sort of deal goes on. Like, you know, because essentially – you're not well you're still buying the game so i'm not really seeing what what the developers have to lose here because you're i guess because something i was thinking about was um because i was thinking about i've been trying not to i told myself i wouldn't and i won't but i really wanted to get monster hunter world on pc because it's on sale right now there's a capcom sale going on um but i noticed there's a drm for like uh, anti-piracy where you can, I think it's, you can log on to five different machines per day. So what I was thinking is, because it's currently not on GeForce now, but if it was, um, you know, if you have the free version, you can play for an hour. Um, and so you have to keep relaunching. When you relaunch, you're on a different PC. And so what happens if you try to play for six hours and they're like, ah, nope. Well, one thing, what, what happens if you do trip that? Do you get immediately reported or do they just say you can't do this? Because, you know... And I'm, I'm wondering if there's any sort of thing like that with Activision Blizzard. Uh, it, I'm wondering if people kind of use GeForce Now for piracy, which would be interesting. I don't know. I, I don't know theoretically how that would work. But, you know, it's I'm interested to see the reason why Activision Blizzard backed out. But it happened. We lost a lot of games. So no Call of Duty on there anymore. No Overwatch. No Diablo. No Warcraft. It's a sad day. But there's still plenty of other games. And they just added Temtem. I saw that and I was so excited. So, to play Temtem. Yeah. I was excited about that because I saw it in the featured games today. Because it was when I was looking up if I could still play Black Ops 3. I saw that Temtem was there and I was like, ah. I do wish that NVIDIA would update us on what games they add because currently they don't. And you, there's no full comprehensive list. You have to search for a specific game. It's really annoying and I wish that they would add one of the two just tell us when they add new games or give us a list because it's annoying not really knowing what's available and i don't want to have to check all my games every day to see if they've added it just it's annoying fix it nvidia please <laughs> but another thing anthem is getting a major overhaul uh, according to bioware so um, this is, I think, interesting because I'm a huge Bioware fan. I mean, I personally think that the Mass Effect trilogy is the best video game trilogy in the history of video games, although I would probably say The Witcher would be next. The only reason that I don't necessarily put it at the top is just because it's it's not that it's necessarily incohesive. It's just the games are so insanely different, and that's kind of a, that's kind of a good thing, you know, that they've improved massively with each game, but Mass Effect did that. Well, kind of. I would say two is better than three, but like you know, they're they're kind of co they're more cohesive. So, Mass Effect trilogy, best trilogy in all of gaming, and you know, Dragon Age games are amazing. Kotor, like Jade Empire, Bioware is really good at what they do. And Andromeda was not a bad game either. You guys just hate on games too much. It just wasn't an amazing Mass Effect game. It was a good game though, but. Yeah, it sounds like, from what they're saying, it sounds like they're trying to pull a Realm Reborn on Anthem, you know, like Final Fantasy XIV, um, which then begs the question, you know, like if they were to do exactly what Final Fantasy XIV did and essentially make a sequel to Anthem that's, you know, they give to the original people, um, should I play Anthem? Because I have EA Access. Um, it was when I got it for like a dollar and then they just started charging me and I've been too lazy to cancel it because I make bad decisions. I mean, it's only five bucks, but Anthem's on there. So I'm really considering playing through Anthem, but it's but people are like, it's just not that fun to play. But it's like, as long as it's got a decent story, you know, but also I don't have any time. So that's why I'm just like, 
I'm torn because now I kind of want to play Anthem before this, and then if like you know if it is that they add story content, then I know what I'm in for, you know? Because you can still play like a Realm Reborn because that's what I did. I played a Realm Reborn, but I haven't played the original like Final Fantasy XIV. So when I found out that it was actually a continuation, I was like, oh. That makes a lot more sense because it's kind of confusing. It's The story's a little bit confusing if you haven't at least heard of the original Final Fantasy XIV because it is technically a sequel. But, you know, it's it's whatever. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. It's interesting that they're trying to support it. They're, they're still – they're not giving up on it. And, you know, I applaud Bioware for doing that because I love Bioware as a company. I think people give them too much flack. Um, so it's exciting to see that they're not giving up yet. Right. Lastly, Ubisoft has confirmed that five AAA games are planned for release between late 2020 and early 2021. So essentially saying that they're they're releasing five games this fiscal year. Because as far as I'm aware, they don't have any AAA games coming before that. So uh, we already know that three of them are Rainbow Six Quarantine, Watch Dogs Legion, and Gods and Monsters. Because as far as we know now, they have not been delayed. So those are three that are locked in because they said that they were, they were going to come out within this fiscal year. So it'll be interesting to see. I think Gods and Monsters comes out this fall because it was supposed to come out in February. So it's pretty much done. Watch Dogs Legion... Could be a launch game. Could be like the black flag of this gen. We'll see. But Rainbow Six. Mm -mm. Then again, you have a lot of games. Because uh, the other two are big questions. However, Jason Schreier, who somehow knows everything. I mean, Assassin's Creed is pretty much confirmed. But the other one's supposed to be a new Far Cry. Which at first I was like, come on, another Far Cry? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Far Cry 5. But... It's just an oversaturation of Far Cry's, I say as I talk about Assassin's Creed. But, you know, they're different, okay? They're different. But it, it I mean, I'm assuming it'll be early 2021. This is going to be like a March thing. Um, but that'll be three years after five. So I guess, you know, I it's you know, time's just flying by, I guess. But it's two years after New Dawn. However, New Dawn was just copy, paste, add story content. There you go. Um, but... Yeah, so I guess it's not that bad, but it's like Rainbow Six Corn. I don't know. I think if I were to guess an order, I would say Gods and Monsters, Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs Legion, Rainbow Six, Far Cry. I don't think they would put both Ace, Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs around the same time because they're similar games in terms of gameplay. So I don't know. I really don't. And Watch Dogs and Far Cry are similar. So it's like, how do they space that out? You know? It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting if we get, like, Assassin's Creed in October and then Watch Dogs in December. That wouldn't be out of the question. Then Rainbow Six in February and Far Cry in March. Yeah, I could see Watch Dogs coming out before Gods and Monsters and using Gods and Monsters as sort of like a buffer. Like, Watch Dogs October, Gods and Monsters November, Assassin's Creed, or Assassin's Creed October, Gods and Monsters November, Watch Dogs December. I don't know, there's, a, there's not a lot of time for all this to come out. Although we could say September. Have they said specifically Q4? Let me look up. Uh, five. Well, they also confirmed that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is not one of them. So if Jason Schreier is wrong, it's below, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is not one of them. So that's just confirmed. Also, from what we've heard, like from what Jason Schreier has heard anyway, uh, Skulls and Bones has been redone over and over and over. It seems like it just doesn't really have an identity. So that's why we're still not getting it. And so honestly, it sounds like Skull and Bones, I'm surprised it hasn't been canceled yet because... It just, it seems like it doesn't have enough to really have its own identity or, you know, there's just not enough there. It seems like that's the issue. Um, I, for one, naval stuff was my least favorite in Assassin's Creed. I just wanted to, you know, kill some people good old-fashioned way. So I was not a fan of the naval stuff. So Stolen Bones has not interested me at all. 
but you know it is sad if it doesn't come to fruition because they've been working on it for a really long time i mean god when did they get announced like 2016 or something like that i feel like it's been a while but yeah i mean it, i i feel bad if it you know i think it was 2016 because i think it was the same year as god of war when, when playstation had this really good conference and then ubisoft also had a really good conference because they had um no, I think it was 2017 because I think it was the same year as Mario and Rabbids because they had that. They had um, Beyond Good and Evil 2. And then, you know, all kinds of stuff, man. Good good stuff. Good stuff. It was a good year for them. Whatever year they announced all that stuff was a good year for Ubisoft. Uh, that's Creed Origins. But I think it was 2017. I really, I'm pretty sure it was. So, yeah. We're getting some games and some pretty big games in a fairly short amount of time. It's like all Ubisoft's heavy hitters. Also, since I'm thinking about it, they, that was another thing they just announced today, yesterday for you guys. A freaking, it's an escape room that's Prince of Persia themed that incorporates VR. It's not a new Prince of Persia game. It's a, a, it's an escape room that's going to be in like select locations and then you can use VR. It's like that's like the, the the worst thing to announce since Diablo Immortal, like by any game company, where like they're creating this new installment and then they're like, "Here's a mobile game," and then Ubisoft's like, "Here's a VR experience." Like, get it's ridiculous. Like they could have made it Assassin's Creed. That's literally Assassin's Creed is the spiritual successor to Prince of Persia. So they could have made it Assassin's Creed, but no, they deliberately decided to screw with us and so if we do not get the prince of persia game announced within the next two years i'm gonna be pissed i better hear it at e3 honestly like e3 should be the thing if it's not announced at e3 i'll be upset i'm already upset actually but you know like they would not announce that if they didn't it, you know that's confirmation they're thinking about it like they're thinking about the prince of persia franchise so give us a new game because oh, yeah. the old games they're just so difficult to play nowadays. Like I, I think I got the two thrones on PC and literally it's unplayable because the pixels don't function right anymore. Like the, the pixel size, when they get stretched, it makes it so that it's like, you can't make certain jumps and stuff. Um, so like maybe if I got it on consoles, it'd be better, but we just, we need, we need more Prince of Persia and not the stupid movie tie in. The Forgotten Sands, that was, I think it was. More Prince of Persia. Yeah. So I'm upset about that. But now, getting into the nitty gritty, I'm going to give you guys an in-depth GeForce Now review. So I'm going to talk all about it. I've already talked a little bit about it because it has been in the news. But yeah, I spent a lot of time with it. Um, I think the longest I've played, because I, I have reached the timer limit i've reached my six hours uh, because it was the first night that my friend and i played dying light we just played it until like five in the morning uh because it's such a fantastic game but um yeah i reached it i know how that all works and everything like that is this six hour limit if you are a founder but um yeah so we're going to talk about the setup and the interface that'll be i kind of want to split this up into different parts a little bit but I kind of talked about it a little bit before. It's not great. Um, I wish there was, like I said, I wish there was a comprehensive list. It's pretty easy to jump back into things you're doing. It has like a recently played option and things like that. But then, you know, 99% of the time I have had like at least once where it hasn't had me log into the service. Like it hasn't had me do the confirmation code, but it's annoying because since you do essentially log into a different PC every time, you have to simulate it you have to do stupid like we're going to send a confirmation code to your email enter it here and so you have to do that every time it's annoying it's a pain in the butt so there's really no quick way to get into games with geforce now it's kind of annoying but yeah setup and interface wise is definitely the weakest part of geforce now it's kind of clunky it's not all that well built but it did just get out of beta you know it's still better than stadia <laughs> but yeah so it's probably the worst part of it. I, I don't have a lot to say about it because I just don't really like it that much. And I feel like I said, like I said, I kind of covered it earlier. But as far as visual performance, this is 
this is good stuff. So it is locked at 1080p now. There's been no word as to whether or not we'll get 4K. I'm sure we'll get 4K eventually. It's just no word as to when that's happening. I, I definitely think it's going to be something that they develop when they get um, more data centers, more resources for that sort of thing. But, you know, I, well, I also think it's going to be something where they actually start raking in money because right now no one's actually paying. You either do the free version or you do the three months free version and then you pay. So no one's really paying for GeForce now right now. So... I don't, they're not really making an income on it, but maybe a year from now we'll get 4K. I hope it's pretty soon. It'd be nice to get it with the fault, like new consoles, you know, because they're boasting 8K to be like 4K streaming. That'd be nice, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, you know, visually they look good. I mean, Apex only runs at 720. Um, one thing though, if you are interested in using GeForce Now or are using GeForce Now, I think I mentioned this last week, but. Um, always go into the options of the game before you start it up because it is automatically set to best performance or best or balanced. That's what it's called, balanced, where it will, um, it supposedly cranks up the specs as high as they can go while still giving you that good experience. However, I always do it anyway. Like Dying Light at balance is at 720p and I think it's at ultra, like I think everything ultra, maybe not even, but I cranked it up to 1080. I put everything on ultra. I did the um, view distance. I maxed it out and I also turned off motion blur because I don't like motion blur, but um, I had everything maxed out and it ran perfectly fine. I had no issues with it. So go into the options and max things out as much as you can, except for competitive games. That's the only thing where you could definitely try it. Um, I don't think I did with Overwatch, but, um, you know, beware about that because that could potentially affect it. For instance, Apex Legends, I just have issues with it. But I found out, apparently I'm in the minority here because other people do not have that issue. Like it runs fine for them on GeForce Now. And for some reason it works fine on my phone, but it will not run well on my laptop. So I don't know what the problem is, but I just play on my laptop regularly. I don't use GeForce Now to play Apex anymore because it just doesn't work well for me for some reason. And I can also play in 1080p on, you know, using that, using my laptop, even though it's 4K, it's just because it's, it's, it's a laptop, you know, it can't run games as well as a, an actual PC, but, um, yeah, so visually it looks really good. There's some games that look better than others. Like I said, Apex is capped at 720. Some of them will, like I said, they'll set 720, but you can crank them up to 1080. And so I would recommend doing it because I have not ran into an experience yet where it has gotten worse. Even with Apex, it's just I tried lowering it, but it didn't help. So I don't think it even negatively affected Apex. So just go to the settings and crank everything up because it will stop you at a point where it just can't do it. Like, And that's mostly resolution-wise. So you can't set it above 1080. And so, but just crank everything else up. Because like I said, I have not run into a problem. So visually, yeah, like the performance-wise, it runs fine. It runs great. I love it. Um, latency, like I explained before, it's incredible. I mean, in my six hours of gameplay that I put in with Dying Light, I never had a single stutter. Next day, I had a little bit because I think I had more bandwidth. I was playing it in earlier time, but this was like the night. No one was on my Wi-Fi. Um, but, you know, it can depend on your bandwidth usage. I don't think it uses a ton, but I could be wrong. But this is easily the best part about GeForce now is that there is minimal latency. Like I said, when I played Overwatch, it was hovering around 18 to 19 milliseconds of latency. And I believe natural latency, like with an Xbox controller, just to a regular PC, is like 11 milliseconds. I could be completely wrong, but that's insanely close. I mean, like I say, it is not even noticeable, the latency. It is insanely good. And it just, it blows Stadia out of the water. It is insanely fast. It is so good. And so if you need anything to convince you about GeForce Now, that is it. Like, sub-zero latency. It's just phenomenal. And I still don't know how they do it. But it's good. It's really, really good. And even when it stutters, it's very quick. It's 100% because of your internet. It's not because of, I'm convinced it's not because of GeForce now. It's an ISP thing, it's a bandwidth thing, but they do really well at recovering from that. It just runs so well. 
It's so good. It's so good. Guys, it's so good. <laughs> that, that's all I have to say. Um, but then as far as the purchasing guide, I mean, like I said, they have two versions. They have the free version where you, you know, don't have to pay any money, but you are capped at an hour just so that they want to make sure everybody is able to play. If they get too many players for the servers, so you would have to be in a queue. Whereas if you're a, um, you're the founders, you pay $5 a month, except you get 90 days free to start. So you actually don't pay anything right now. And then you get access to up for six hours and then you are put up to the front of the queue. So it's really nice. Like I said, it's free too. So get it, you know, then you can play for up to six hours of time, then immediately get back in. Because like I said, there's no queue that I have seen right now. There just aren't people using GeForce now. It's not an issue. Um, someone let me know if they ever encounter it because I have not. I've never had a problem with getting in a queue. It's just been immediate. But yeah, overall verdict. Um, I, I kind of went through this a little fast because I, I did talk about it a decent amount last week. These are just sort of final impressions. Um, but I should have thought about this earlier. But Screw it. So I'll give it like a 9 out of 10. I think that GeForce Now is amazing just because of that latency for the most part. Like, it has some kinks to work out. It's not perfect. That's why I gave it a 9. But it's phenomenal. It is a phenomenally great service. And if you are excited about game streaming, GeForce Now is the one to go with right now. I think Stadia has some good things as well. And there are some things that it has that GeForce Now does not. But GeForce Now overall is a better service. You know? It might not have 4K and it might not have the exclusives, but you can play a lot more games right now and you don't have to buy games separately from games you already have on your PC. It's really, really nice and I'm really glad it exists because there's a lot of PC games that I don't necessarily play because I just have my laptop now so I can continue to play them on here. So yeah, 100% would recommend GeForce Now to anybody. And be, especially because it's free right now. So just try it out. If you have any interest at all in streaming, do it. You know, it, there's no cost to you. Except if you have data caps, that could affect it. But just don't use it too much or set it lower. But it's really good, guys. It's really good. And so, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap that up just a little bit early today. Because like I said, I'm not, I don't have a whole lot to talk about there. But it's a really, really fun time. And yeah, I I do plan on playing. I haven't put Dying Light in a few days now. It's been really busy. And then, like I said, I've, I've been going through some personal stuff. Don't get too much into it, but um, yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot. And so I haven't had a lot of time to play recently, but I want to get through it. We started playing it hard because we've already played through it before. And my God, it, it's hard. It's hard. I don't know what the nightmare difficulty level would be. Jesus. It's just, they take so many hits. Like, humans are so annoying in Dying Light on hard because they take, like, 30 hits at least. It's insane. If you get lucky, it's that. It's just, it's so ridiculously hard. And it's just because they have so much health. That's really the hard part about it. And so it's just, it's ridiculous. But, um, yeah, it's amazing. So talking about some games I'm playing, Again, it's been really busy, so not a whole lot. I think I've already mentioned all of them. Not all of them, actually. So, playing Dying Light. Well, a lot of that, like I said. And then Apex has been my consistent thing. I got back into it, like I said, last week for Season 4. And I have been playing it daily. I've been doing all the daily challenges. I have not played today yet, but I will get to that. Um, that's kind of like the thing I prioritize, just because since this week has been rough... Um, it's very therapeutic for me, like shooters. I really love them. It really helps me vent out my frust my frustrations, and I'm also not too shabby at them. Um, it's also one of many, like, I, I will constantly bring this up if someone talked about violent video games being a bad thing. It gives me an outlet where I don't have to physically harm anyone, but I can, you know, vent. I can, you know, get out my frustration in an outlet that harms nobody. So, suck it, government. Hmm. Anyway, but yeah, Apex Legends has been my my baby this week. But I've also been playing Horizon Zero Dawn. So on IGN's PlayStation Podcast Beyond, they uh, they kind of started like a book club, a, a game club that are replaying or you know sometimes experiencing for the first time these 
uh, big games for PS4. And so they started out with Horizon. And so I was like, I want to join. So I have until the end of the month. Again, since it's been super busy. I have a few hours into it. I think I'm like four and a half hours into the game. I think that's how much time I put. Um, but I only put like three hours into it. And then I quit. It's been like two years. And so now I'm jumping back in. And I'm having so much fun. It is such a really, it's a really, really good game. Like the story is so good and so innovative. I love it. Like it's just yeah, I love the story. It's one of the few games where I can genuinely sit through a character's optional dialogue and not just feel like it's a slog where I'm genuinely like genuinely interested in the game's lore and all that they can tell me. It's just it's such a well-made game and I'm really excited to play more. I didn't get to play any last night. I've been trying to play it daily too cuz I want to make sure I can get through it by the end of the month, but yeah, I've been really, really busy. Um, so I've been trying to devote as much time to it as I can, but it's it's hard. It's, it's very hard. Um, and then, I play, like I said, I played like an hour of Zombie Army 4. I need to get into it more. I just haven't gotten time to. But yeah, that's pretty much all I'm playing this week. Not a whole lot. But yeah, so um, that's where I think I'm going to wrap up this podcast. I think it's going to, like I said, it's, it's a little bit shorter this week. But again, I didn't have a whole lot of time and it's kind of a slow news week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see next week what happens with that E3 launch page. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. It's also, like I said, we're in the slower months right now. March is where things really kick off. So, you know, um, I'm going to talk about dreams and you know, who knows. Uh, but I'll definitely talk about Dark Tires Genesis next time. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but... Yeah, I think that's where we're going to cut things off. And so one quick little plug I'm going to do before I go, and that's I mentioned a couple weeks ago about mental health, that it's a big priority. So I I think back then I had already scheduled it, but, um, you know, I went to see my calendar for the first time in, I don't know, like six months, um, just like to check up. I've been going through a lot of stuff, so it was good. But um, I highly recommend it. Even if you don't think there's anything wrong, if you haven't been to a counselor in a while or a therapist or anything, just go, you know, get a checkup, see how it's going, because your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Also, um, I'm the type of person that gets like really uh, pessimistic sometimes, and when one thing goes wrong, I act like everything is wrong. And so, a word of advice for people who do similar things or or are in similar situations. Uh, always remember that there there are good things. So like, for example, I because I don't want to, it sounds very general and a lot of people say that. So like, for example, for me, I have one aspect of my personal life that is, is pretty much in shambles right now. And it's really, it's been really hard for me to cope with. But I have so many things going on, like in terms of my career path and, you know, where I am in my life, where I've been better than ever. And so I'm really, really happy with what I'm doing in certain aspects like this podcast and my internship and to a extent college. I mean, I'm, I'm excited that I know what I want to do, um, but I have a path to go for it. I have a purpose in my life for once that I'm sure of. And so that's really, really good. And that makes me really, that's what gets me through it. And a lot of times, you know, like I said, these personal issues I'm going through, if something develops in that and then I just get really down, my, my default response is, gosh, my life is so terrible. Like, why can't I just be happy or something like that? And it's like, I'm, I really am. Like, I'm really not, like, I'm really okay. It's just, you know, a lot of times our brains will prioritize that sort of bad thing because it is such an emotional thing. Like, it is such a terrible thing for us and not to downplay that by any means. But it's also important to remember that there are so many good things in your life that you might not be thinking of. And it's important to focus on those things because otherwise everything kind of slips away. Because you're so focused on the bad that, you know, it's important to know that and be thankful for it. And so I am thankful that I have so many things going right for me right now. Even though it's really busy and I'm kind of stressed out about it, I know, like, in the long run, things are going to be really, really good because of the choices I've been making recently and just kind of how things have been going, the opportunities that have been given. And so it's just important to have the mentality. I've been very conscious of my mental health um, over the past, like, nine months or so just because last year for me was a very rough year and I was not in a good mental state whatsoever. And so even though I've had some really awful things happen to me in recent, like recent weeks, months, that sort of thing, um, I'm not really that bad because I have been prioritizing my mental health and I really hope people like you are too. And you know, 
If you're going through a really rough time and you don't have a therapist, you don't have access to one, you don't have anybody to talk to, I'm always here, you know, feel free. So let me comment down below. We'll find some some sort of private space to chat. I'm totally down for that. Like I, I kind of sound sarcastic there, but I have lost someone that I know to suicide. I was almost a victim of suicide. People I care about were almost victims of suicide. It's something very important to me, mental health. And so if you are going through a rough time, whether we're complete strangers or we're best friends, I will be there for you no matter who you are, what you've done, your past, your present, your future, because it's a terrible thing for you to have to go through that and for the people that care about you to have to go through that. And so, you know, as someone who's been at the absolute lowest it does get better and it's not some like bs that i'm spewing it does it really does um it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows it's not it never will be there's going to be some really fun times and some really good times but it's never going to be perfect there's always going to be some sort of issue that you have to work through and so i think it's it's tempering that expectation is the first step but yeah it'll it'll be it'll get better and i am a great cuddler so you know, that could that could also be of use to you, possibly. But anyway, um, yeah, a little bit of a rant, but I think it's really important. That's why I stress it a lot. It's not really particular to games, but it's particular to life. And so I think everybody needs to hear it. So thank you for listening or watching. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Like I said, Darksiders. Who knows what sort of news will pop up, what sort of games will come up. But um, yeah, thanks. And I will see you guys next time. Shoot, it didn't stop.